Um, the, oh, he he disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Networking with Nathaniel. This is episode 20, so 20 here um, down. I have the pleasure of being with Jeff McGrew here. We have met through some mutual friends, um, even more than friends for you, Carlin, uh, Jesse Stanton, yes. Shane Evans, James Zigger. <laughs> uh, was just on uh, a few weeks ago and shane evans is actually coming out tomorrow uh, this oh nice recorded yeah on december 19th 2023 uh, jeff has been in sub two for seven eight months at this point um, been a yes. member of the growth co for about four or five months at this point and um, i'm excited to hear what you have going on inside of there and outside of there but before we get started man um Thanks for being here. Oh, I didn't mention Absolutely. Jeff has uh, between he and his girlfriend, five kids running around the house. So he's a he's a full time dad, a full time entrepreneur and, and an mm -hmm. all around amazing guy um, from what I can tell so far in our short time together. But yeah, um, thanks for being here, man. How you doing? Of course, today? I appreciate the introduction and I appreciate the time to actually have this opportunity to sit down with you, get to know you a little bit more, but also allow you to have a little bit of a perspective into my life. Yeah. I look forward to it. I I love meeting um you know people and and hearing what they got going on. It gives me inspiration. It kind of allows me to figure out how I can work with other people and and how other people can come work with you know the two of us. And you came highly recommended. So um, absolutely, don't, man. Don't let us down. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So what uh what kind of keeps you busy on a day to day basis, Jeff? Like what what's kind of within real on? estate or within everyday life? Just kind of like what's a normal day for you? Oh, man. So I'm up at 4 a.m. I actually live in California. So PST on the time zone, but okay. wake up at 4 a.m. I'm straight into real estate for the first couple hours before I get my kids up and ready for school. And then after the kids are in school, I'm back at home now because I have a winter seasonal layoff due to my W-2. Okay. Currently still currently still working a W-2, trying to keep real estate as not a side hustle, but a main hustle and focusing my a little less on my nine to five and a little more on my six to 10 when I'm after work, you know? Okay. So, well, be fan before the nine to five too, it sounds like. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest plan. I mean, cause then I can target my East coast leads in the morning when I'm up at 4am that way I'm not hitting them in the evenings when it's 10, 11 o'clock their time. Yeah. So it's a little more efficient for my time management skills. But um, with that being said, kids go to school. I come back home now that I'm off my W2 straight back to real estate. And I kind of split my time between my real estate business and my growth co um, business as well. Yeah. Responsibilities there. Um, yeah. I, I We've probably texted about it, uh, but I forget what it is you do with your W2 and like what would cause the winter. Might be oh, expensive. absolutely. That's not a problem. So I'm a supervisor for a fuels reduction management crew. And we work within our county to help mitigate and prevent wildland fires from getting into national forests as well as destroying homes. That's right. So, yeah, a pretty labor intensive day. Normally it's four 10 hour days. So I have Fridays off, which is nice. I get to focus that time to my family as well as my real estate business. And then um, during the winter hours, it allows me more time to focus on my real estate. This being my first year in sub two and the growth co, I really get to implement that time management into my real estate business instead of just doing my normal, comfortable everyday routine that I would be doing throughout the year. So this year has not only been drastic for my business structure, my personal life, but also my mindset. I mean, I completely stepped out of my comfort zone. I'm doing things and putting myself into rooms in front of people that I have never met, never thought I would, allowing myself to get uncomfortable, fail forward and learn from my mistakes, but also progress where I want to be, like not just stay stagnant within my own life. That's amazing. And it, it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of this is due to your time with the Growth Cup. A hundred percent. I mean, I started in sub two, like I said, I love the community. I love the outreach, the videos that I caught on Pace and what he does and what he's promoting and the support and the giving. I'm all about that. I'm all about the positive energy. I love giving back to people. I love being able to help people. And ultimately that that is who I am within my core. It, it's a giver. It's somebody that wants to see people succeed. So as soon as I got a, a little wind of what the Growth Co. was offering and not only noticing that 
these people were from sub two. These people had met each other through sub two or through real estate investing. But above all of that, they came together as a like-minded group to actually help and benefit investors on another level, on that level that I was looking for, not only within my own business as a starting out real estate investor, trying to figure out where I am and how to kind of mitigate and manage my time more efficiently and not just deal with as much as there is in real estate to deal with. So they not only helped me find that, but also helped me realize that there is more to do either, even outside of sub two to be a better benefit to people. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I like, I agree with the sub two thing. There's just so much knowledge and so much uh, like amazing things going on inside that community, but sometimes getting a little bit more focused. And that's something that sub two does provide is allowing you to network and really kind of figure out who those core people are that you're going to, you know, spend your time with and, and learn and grow with. That's what exactly. you've done here with the growth co. And um, I've watched you guys. I, I did the pun with James to grow <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a, as a little unit. And I'm looking forward to what the next three, six, 12 months brings and, you know what the heck oh, 2024 is going to have um, so i it so i caught that you're making phone calls for real mm -hmm. estate wise like what is it that you're doing as a real estate investor kind of on a day-to-day -day basis so actually right now i'm acquisitions and i have a business partner brennan and he okay. lives in mississippi and he's kind of our boots on the ground on the south and we also have a lead gen manager that manages our lead lists he okay. kind of funnels he funnels them to me I submit the offers. We all kind of, uh, if all of us are a part of the working business, then we all take a part of the profit. And if it doesn't require any of the business and it's just a single alone person, then we only split the profits with the lead gen. Okay. So it's kind of nice. It not only frees up our time to be able to work on what we want to do practically, because my partner Brennan's more of an integrator. I'm more of the visionary on the end. And then we got our buddy Devin, who's lead gen at the moment. And we actually just fell into a opportunity to be able to work with a full-time TC team that wants to work within our business, as well as a full-time Dispo team that wants to work within our business. Wow. So exciting moves are happening. And it's nice that all of the parts are kind of falling into place, you know, how you kind of touch bases on sub two and growing your network and being able to find the people that actually fill those positions that you don't want to be doing alone <laughs> in your own business. It's a powerful thing and a little um, underutilized, I would say, because just starting out within sub two this year, I have noticed that a lot of people that have been in here for several years still haven't taken over the benefit and the opportunity of being able to grow that network that they have, being able to find the people that they need to put into their own position within their business. So they're not doing every task, not doing the parts that they don't appreciate, that they don't want to waste their time on, really being able to deep dive into your avatar and who you are and what you want to focus your time on. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. It will It'll not only change your entire business structure, but it'll change your lifestyle a little bit too. Not only did, <clears throat> excuse me, not only did finding clarity within my business help my business structure as well as my time management structure, but it also helped me kind of get a little more clarity within my own life and my own life structure and who I was wasting my time with, what I was wasting my time on, and kind of managing that a little more efficiently. My family, together like our unit is so efficient within this last year not only within my personal growth but within my girlfriend's personal growth because as i'm growing on my journey she's also growing and developing in her own journey and she's actually transitioning from a medical assistant to a nurse and going through the nursing program right now so our whole lifestyle and dynamic is about to change even more drastically but it's an exciting moment i mean yeah. those those are the moments we should be looking for within our life it shouldn't be a moment of anxiousness and nervousness that allows fear to creep in and hold you back. It should be that excited feeling that a kid gets on that first day of school or that first new bike that they get to ride. They're not nervous. They're not overly anxious or thinking the what ifs. They just think, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to ride this bike or I can't wait to make friends. And I think along the lines as adults, we kind of lose that. We let anxiousness and fear creep into our lives and into our mindset ultimately limiting us to what we can do overall and to our own potential. And I think that's a powerful statement to be said because your potential is only limited by yourself. Man, it's pretty incredible to hear you talk, man. I feel like I just like <laughs> unlocked you and you just went and like, holy moly, so many nuggets in here. I like I appreciate that, man. Yeah, definitely it's kind of reminding me of uh, the the mindset shift of 
you know, when something new comes across our plate, a lot of the times we're saying why we can't do it and how it won't be able to get done instead of saying like get being excited and trying to figure out how we can make it happen. You know, and that's if, what it comes down to. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, manifestation is a powerful thing. And a lot of people forget that you need to be your biggest cheerleader in life. Hmm. You don't want other people cheering on the sides because you're not going to hear that. But if you're openly telling yourself, I am going to make a million dollars this year, I am going to achieve financial freedom, I am going to be successful, you're going to manifest that in your life, you're going to walk into those rooms and those positions that you need to be in to get there. But if you're doubting yourself and holding yourself back and beating yourself up and saying, no, I'm not going to achieve this and I can't get there, you know, I'm not that type of person. That's just limiting belief. And that rely or that comes and stems from your childhood. I mean, everybody holds on to those things in their childhood that may have had an impactful thing on your life and you don't even know it yet. But it ultimately is because you're doubting yourself. You're holding yourself back. You're limiting your own abilities. And as a human, being told that your abilities are limited is the worst thing to be told because yeah. it's like putting a human in a cage. We're not meant to be caged. We're not meant to be told that we have to do this and this way and this way only. Like, that's not how life is. That's not how each individual human is. So why would we think that we should be like that and limited to that belief? Right. Yeah, man. I like I'm I, I'm holding back the smile the entire time. <laughs> and there's something that I've been doing um on these not every episode but just when it comes up and and it kind of ties in a little bit as like not only believing you can but then also giving yourself the the grace for what you have done already as well like we we grew up well I did at least when I was you know in in grammar school and stuff you pat yourself on the back when you do something well like hey you spelled exactly. that word right pat yourself on the back I don't you don't do that anymore as adults no. like just giving yourself the little graces for things like that um, and that's what it comes down to I mean you need to be able to celebrate your wins and even if it's just a small small a small celebration your brain wants that it wants that there's a cycle within a habit. And if it's a positive habit, you have that cue of what you're doing and then the habit engages. And then at the end, you want a reward. And that's that dopamine release within your brain saying, this is a good thing. I want to do this more. Right. So if you continuously develop that positive habit into telling yourself, hey, we are winning and talking about your wins and your goals, even if they are small within the day, it's still a win. Yeah. Don't allow one person's goals and one person's success each day to factor into your success. Because again, everybody is different. Everybody has goals. Even if it's just, I got to get up at 4 a.m. and you get up at 4 a.m. the next day, that's a pat on the back. Like you said, like you need to celebrate that and ultimately tell people about that. Tell yourself about that. Like we did it. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Like yep. we got this. Yep. And I love yeah, that. I love that you mentioned that, man. It's not, it, and it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't have to be the big things, just getting up. Like Carlin mentioned, you know, she writes down every little thing. That way at the end of the day, she can look back and say, I did accomplish stuff. And as simple exactly. as just like, I made the bed. Like I made the exactly. bed. Yeah. So, yep. and and that those, those little things too, they steamroll into, into the bigger things as well. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, that positive energy, that motivation, it's just a, a snowball effect of what is going to affect your life. And if right. it's constant positive and constant encouragement, you're only going to bring more positive energy into your life. Yeah. Nobody said I stay positive my whole life and everything dark and bad right. happened in my life. Yeah. Nobody said that. Like, yeah. that's not a thing. Nobody <laughs> says I'm super negative all the time. And, but somehow I became a millionaire and I'm yeah. and now everybody loves me. Like you got to project what you want in your life and make sure that it is known, like tell people about it. Praise yourself, praise others, keep that positive energy going, and ultimately things will fall into place how they're supposed to be in your life. Yeah. I I do want to move on to your uh your role and kind of your time yeah. spent with the growth co. But before we do that, um as far as the deals that you're doing on your real estate with your um your small team there. Where are they located um, and are they primarily like wholesale deals? What does that kind of look like? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, <clears throat> our lead gen is focusing on wholesale deals. We're working in the Florida, Mississippi, Alabama markets Okay. because my partner, Brennan, is in Mississippi, wait, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Yeah, um, he's boots on the ground in Mississippi. We also have a unicorn agent out of Jackson, Mississippi, that is working with us, working with him on boots on the ground, not only touching bases direct to seller and direct to agent, but also just utilizing her as a person in our market that we can reach out to if we need. Um, 
right now we're focusing on wholesaling to build capital to invest back into our buy and hold. But I I've came to the realization that most investors are doing this. And because of my time within the Growth Co, and I'm actually not only a member and a team member of the Growth Co, I'm also going through the current cohort of the Growth Co right now, our our mentorship, I should say. Mm -hmm. We're transitioning out of the word cohort. It's a mentorship. That way more people understand that it is a mentorship and that is what we're offering. But I'm currently going through it and we're coming to the realization that if you're focusing your time on wholesaling and you ultimately are focusing on building capital just to reinvest in buy and holds, then why shouldn't we just transition now into buy and holds? Why shouldn't I focus on finding capital partners, uh, PMLs, HMLs, Gators, that way I can invest now and not waste my time on wholesaling? So there's planning, there's a meeting ahead in our business future. <laughs> we do a planned meeting once a week, usually that we all touch bases, make sure that we're all hitting our KPIs and our goals, but there will be a plan after the Jackson list that I think we will be transitioning into buy and holds and focusing more on finding capital partners and PMLs that we can put back into our deals. Yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm feeling in a similar spot. We, we recently three, two, two and a half, three months ago, stopped wholesaling to okay. focus solely on flipping. Um, and it, what it, what the reasoning behind that was my wife had quit her job after having a second child mm -hmm. and she, you know, with the purpose of being a, you know, being a full-time mom and also being a part of the business and with wholesaling, I was doing everything and she was doing right. very little and so she didn't feel, you know, vested in the company. So we said, mm -hmm. you know, what do we do? We took a lot of stock and what we want our days to look like. Um, long story short, we ended up deciding flipping's the way. She can, you know, have her like put her designer hat on, and she does a lot oh. of back end stuff as well. But um, it still is kind of the same means to an end as wholesaling. We're flipping so right. we can get capital, you know, free up free up our time. That way we can buy long term assets. Oh. Like you're saying, maybe just flip the script, start at the end, start with the end in mind and let's, mm -hmm. you know, just work the end result. But um, enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about you joined the Growth Co. I think you said you joined them in July, but you actually became a part of the team in August. Yes. Um, what is your role um, with their with them consist of? So my role and title would be onboarding specialist. Okay. And my focus is on reaching out to investors that join our group that are interested in possibly joining our mentorship program. That way we can do a little more one-on-one -on -one focus with each of our clients. That way we can help them structure their business a little more effectively. And our niche client would be investors within one to five years of business <clears throat> who are possibly struggling within their uh, business, still wearing all the hats, maybe maybe unsure of where their goals are and just treading water. We're trying to build that structure. We're trying to implement so they know where their goals are at, how to uh, manage their goals effectively and make sure that they're on a time managed uh, schedule to make sure that they hit their goals on okay. a manageable time, as well as the accountability and the outreach that we offer is phenomenal it's a for life membership so <clears throat> every time every person that goes through the mentorship not only has access to life to everybody within the community the coaches anybody that they could want to reach out to about a deal need help with on a question even if they're looking for somebody as a connector our community is that type of accountability and support that we want to grow so you're um if I were to be interested in joining the Growth Co., mm -hmm. you're not the person that I would talk to initially. You're the person that I talk to after I've decided to join? Nope. You would talk to me initially. Okay. I would basically engage your response on if you're interested in joining a mentorship, if you have the capacity or the capital to invest in yourself at this time, and what your business structure looks like and how we can better benefit you. I kind of like to get a rundown of each client's uh, business on where they're at within their business, what they're doing within their business, and then what is holding them back as well within the next six to 12 months where they would like to be. Okay. So it gives me a little bit of broad background on how we could better help them if they do decide to join our mentorship program. 
after they after we get that response, if it is a yes, we would pass them to a triage call, which would be with either Carlin or Jesse. Okay. And they would basically gauge the response on, hey, are you committed and are you ready to put yourself and your goals first? Because ultimately, that's what we're here for. We're here to help that investor that is struggling, unsure of how they're going to make it happen, maybe doing one or two hours of real estate a day sporadically, maybe sometimes on the phone, maybe sometimes on the computer, don't have any partners in their business. So they're wearing all the hats, like just at a loss of how their business structure should be, where their goals should be, even what a business within real estate investing should look like. We're trying to target that type of niche client and help them ultimately build that foundation for their business so when they walk away, completed out of our mentorship program, even though it is for life and that outreach and support is there for life, they have that structure underneath them that we have built for them and helped them build personally dedicated to each client. Okay. And how long, I know you mentioned that it's, you know, it's a lifelong kind of membership, but how long is the kind of focused uh, mentorship part? The mentorship consists of eight weeks. Okay. Yep. And we have Zoom live Zoom meetings Wednesday nights and Thursday nights. Wednesday night would be based on like a implementation night and we would give out information that we're trying to build into your business. Thursday night would be kind of a homework night where we would discuss how to implement our information from Wednesday into your business. And then the over the weekend, we do a thing called a teach to learn. And it allows each client to take the information they learned Wednesday and Thursday put it into their business or their everyday life and implement it. And as well as teach someone else how to do it as well. Yeah. That way you're overall learning from a teaching standpoint, as well as a teacher standpoint. Yeah. So it's very yeah. nice uh, hitting both sides of the client's learning ability and teaching ability. So it'll only better benefits the business overall. Yeah. I love that. You're hitting. It's, oh, it's very yeah. powerful. Yeah. And then we also have Monday um, bonus Zooms every week, which are open to everybody that has graduated through our mentorship program. And it's a spot where you can come, reach out about a deal, ask a question, see where you're struggling and see where you can get some guidance at. Basically, just a, a safe Zoom spot that you're able to reach out to anybody that is within our Zoom community that showed up and ask for help. Okay. Yeah, I love this. This is the first time I've gotten uh, I've asked these types of questions. I couldn't tell oh, you what course. the heck Carlin and I talked about three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, never a problem. Yeah, this is amazing. I, lo I love this stuff. Are you able to talk about like what pricing looks like? Is that unfortunately uh, the pricing is directed to our triage call just uh, to make sure the clients are able to make that cost and. Yeah. As our mentorships change and evolve, the price has been going up. So our yeah, next mentorship, that, yeah, yeah. So our next mentorship being January twenty twenty, January twenty fourth, twenty twenty four, is going to be our full, our first all women's cohort, right. which is super exciting, yeah. very exciting stuff. But even that price has changed from the last current cohort that I am in. So okay. it will only be going up based on the availability of our seats and how many clients we get. So I can't stress it enough. If it's an investor that's struggling to try to find some tra traction in their business, please reach out. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, how many uh, people typically do you have in a in a group? It has only gone up every cohort. So okay. it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it keeps it, it's gone up every cohort. So I'm excited to see what the next cohort in January brings. OK, yeah, I I. I... I think doing the all women's one is going to be a pretty cool thing, especially for Carlin's going to take the lead on that. Um, um, Absolutely. Part, yeah. So that's, I'm excited to watch where that kind of all plays mm -hmm. out and unfolds. Um, I do have a couple kind of fun questions, I guess, let's before we it. get to those. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Um, do you have any like, if somebody just getting started in, in real estate or any, uh, you know, entrepreneurial journey, do you have any like kind of uh, books, podcasts, documentaries, anything like that, that might maybe push them over the edge of just taking action? Or... Oh man, two come to the top of my head okay. books that were powerful reads and I've actually read them a couple times. So uh, who, not how, mm phenomenal. Not only is it going to better benefit a real estate investor trying to build that traction in their business, but also find those people that they need to put into place in their business. So they're not doing all the work. Right. Powerful, powerful read, not only for the mind, but also for the business. And then the other one, um, the gap in the gain, a oh, lot of people yeah. tread water within their business and they will 
stay in a comfortable position. And there's a big difference on staying consistent and doing productive things and just staying consistent and staying busy. Yeah. And the gap in the gain fills that out perfectly, basically explaining to investors that you don't want to just be treading water in your own business. You don't want to stay comfortable. Like you got to look and realize when you're in that gap and how you're going to get out of it and get into the gain moment. It's a powerful book. I highly recommend it. For yeah, investors. that's one. Yeah, I haven't read that one. And that's popped up a handful of times now in my in my networking. And it's something you've mentioned this now a couple of times. Um, the uncomfortability. You mm. mentioned it with your girlfriend transitioning. Yes. To, you know, to the new role and how, you know, there's going to be changes and things like that. But oddly enough, excited you. Uh, oh, which excited. Is, Overjoyed is what it, it is. Yeah. yeah. Which Just is excited different. For the new and the unknown. Because yep. that's what we should be looking for. That that unknown feeling, that level right. of excitement yeah. within all of our aspects of our life, within business and home life, you should be reaching out for that level of excitement because it's only going to make you a better you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the failures and the and the challenges is that what's make us grow. And and this isn't to say that we don't want a roof over our heads and you know food and water and a, and a place to sleep. We're not talking about that kind of uncomfortable where right. you're sleeping out <laughs> in the rain. We're talking about like you know having a little bit of stress on your on your mental your your you know your body going and, and exercising hard or yep. challenge yourself to a to a new to learn a new skill or a, you know a, exactly a, a deal that I've never done before. Like let's. Yep. Learn those things and grow because six months from now, if we just stay complacent, we're going to still be the same person we are, you know, today. And, and nobody should be living that life complacent no. and saying, I'm the same me I was six months ago. Like yeah. nobody wants to be in that level of conformity. I think that's the system that society has built for us, unfortunately. And it's a level that we need to not only get ourselves out of, but teach to our children as well, because they're the biggest inspiration for most of us as parents that are doing this. You know, we want them to have a level of comfort within their life, but obviously at the same time, knowing that they don't have to stick to the same path and the same script that everybody else does. Like, yeah. I don't want that for my children at all. Not, yeah, not one bit. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we move on to the kind of fun ones, um, what would be the best way for somebody to reach out to you to either bring you a deal be inquiring into the growth co and how they could get um, involved in the mentorship what's the just the best path besides your phone number that you'd like to leave out there <laughs> yeah the phone number yeah shoot them a That's text fine. or call you can shoot me a text i don't okay. mind i love a good conversation yeah. or a call but um jeff mcgrew on facebook you can't miss this face i got yep. super nice glasses and i'm on the beach in my profile photo <laughs> but uh please DM me anytime. I don't mind helping people with deals. I don't mind being a connector to better benefit somebody within their business. If you just want to chat because you're unsure of where you're at in your real estate endeavors, like let's, let's get on a call. Let's see where I could better benefit you. Yeah. Ultimately. I mean, I'm going to say the growth co if it's real estate investing is going to be a better benefit to most people. Mm -hmm. What Carlin and Jesse are creating is phenomenal. And I mean, I'm a leading example of it. So it's hard to say that it didn't change me in every perspective of my life because it did. But at the same time, I want to be that as well. And I want to be that change for other people. So if somebody feels like they have the need to reach out and talk, please reach out. I love a good conversation. I love, yeah, this is the testament <laughs> to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we do have a couple fun ones that we've, we talked about prior to uh, going live here, but um, we'll start with uh, your biggest life lesson. Like, if you if one pops to mind, what's your biggest life lesson and how did you learn it? Man, I, I can literally focus on one because of this year. Like I said, this year has been such a big change in my mindset and the shift in the way I think and the level of comfortability that I put myself in. I, I try to reach uncomfortable moments in my life as much as I can now. With that being said, the biggest life lesson and takeaway that I've had in my life up until now, uh, being 35 <laughs> Don't limit your abilities as a human being. Don't hold on to the fact that humans will try to put you in that box and limit you. Being in a W-2 mindset and being in a mindset that people work for other people at a job that doesn't appreciate you will make you shift, will totally make you shift. And it'll make you realize quick that you are worth more and you are capable of more. And the crazy thing is, is 
not many people understand that within their life. If you're living in a W-2 life and you're trying to get out of that life and trying to dive into real estate or entrepreneurship, I mean, you are going to come to this point. You're going to come to that breaking point where you realize that other humans are trying to put you in a box and tell you that you're not capable enough, that you're only worth this much dollar value, that right. you only need to do what you're paid to do. And as soon as you hear those things, it's almost like a flick of the switch in your brain. It literally felt like somebody flicked a switch and said, no, Jeff, you are worth more. You are better than this. Don't limit your abilities. It's time to find more. It's time to find a different want. And I can honestly say last year, I had no ambition of changing my life. I was content. I was happy. My family life was good. We just bought a house, had a good W-2. It pays well. I love it. It was until that moment when you hear a boss tell you, do what you're paid to do. Don't do anything more. <clears throat> do that and only that or you're fired that people realize that there is more in life. And to be not only belittled, but subjected to something like that in life is, is almost appalling. Yeah. I walked away just kind of disgusted, like, wow, okay, all right, this yes. is my why. This is a big why for me now. This is my drive. It's, okay, you thought I was going hard on my real estate investing hustle now? Wait until now. Yeah. Like, it went up 10x. <laughs> and not only was it a, it was a blessing in disguise, I should say. It was an uncomfortableness that I needed to hear to get myself to change, to want different which was the best thing I could say now, looking back a year ago, having that conversation with a boss, and now looking back to my present state, where I'm at now, the people I'm surrounded on, the Zooms that I'm having, the people I'm talking to, I mean, it's a phenomenal change. And as bad as it is to say that people, when they are put into that position, how bad they feel, how tough it is to not hold resentment, not hold on to that, oh man, they just crushed my dream. Like, don't hold on to that allow yourself to take that, use it as your why and use it as your drive, yeah. use it as a motivator. Because even though it was, like you said, a big moment in my life that was impactful, it was my big why it was my big wake up call too. And I think a lot of people staying in that comfort zone, they don't allow themselves to ever find that moment, find that momentum, find that traction, that why anybody can have a, a resounding why on why they want to do things within their real estate business, such as their family, they want financial freedom. When you can ultimately say that you're doing it for you, that you're doing it to be the you that you're meant to be, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's eye-opening and it's mind-changing. It literally altered the way my mindset uh, thinks and reacts and my drive and passion. I I didn't even know anything about real estate in December of last year. And to say that now and to be able to hold my own with more people that are longer in real estate than I have ever been. And I can still say I can hold my own and hold a conversation and that I do deserve to be in those positions in front of those people talking. It's it's powerful. And I hope anybody listening can enjoy that and relish in that moment in their life. Yeah, I sure can. And I <laughs> I, I, I wasn't looking for it, but the opportunity Opportunity did present itself, so I want you to pat pat yourself on the back, Jeff. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We Especially deserve because not everybody is going to take the, for lack of a better word, verbal abuse from a boss and go, "I'm going to use that to better myself." And right. I'm going to use exactly. that to better my family and my, you know, my surroundings and everything. Like, not everybody does that, so that's definitely pat on the back worthy. Um, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Absolutely, have one man. more for you before we part ways. Perfect. Let's do once it. Once your time, once your time here on this earth has has gone, you are up in heaven or wherever you believe, whatever mm -hmm. you believe happens afterwards. What do you want your memory left behind to be for? What do you want to be remembered for on this earth? Oh man, ultimately giving. <laughs> I want to be a giver. Uh, I mean, pace pace said it on a Zoom. Also, I mean, I want to be used up. I want to be. At the end of my funeral, I want people to say, man, that guy gave so much like he was out there putting his name out, helping people, helping others, watching people succeed. Like ultimately, my big drive in who I am is helping others, putting out that positive energy, keeping the motivation high, keeping people smiling and laughing. Like I want to be remembered for not only helping people keep that energy high, but also have a rippling effect. I mean, if I'm putting out that much energy, it's only affecting other people within my ripple. And yeah. then they're affecting other people within their ripple. So I'm looking for that 
exponentially growing positive motivational energy within my entire lifetime. That way, when I do walk away from this earth, not only have I impacted as many lives as I possibly could, but my ripple is still impacting lives as large as it possibly can. I'm talking Tony Robbins level impact. <laughs> I joked about it with Jesse on a Zoom, but I told him, I'm I'm coming for you, Tony Robbins. I want to be on stage with that guy. Like, I want to be next to him, motivating yeah. people, driving people and changing lives. Well, you talked about manifesting, so it's you, you put it out there now. Um, Dude, it's coming. Been, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I say it every day. I say yeah. it every day. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, man. I, I, I had a feeling that this is this was going to be a fun conversation. Um, it has exceeded my expectations. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Do you have I mean, any parting on... words for anybody just getting started? Any, you know? I mean, just personally, I would say. I talked to Carlin and James a bit about you before the Zoom as well, and I knew that it was going to be a positive, uplifting oh. Zoom as well. So I was excited for it. I would say that if anybody is able to get on your Zoom with you, I would think that would be a crucial thing. I would say anybody that wants to reach out to Nathaniel and get on a Zoom with him, definitely do it. Not only, I mean, is it a great conversation, but it's great branding, it's great marketing, it's great outreach. It allows us to all network and openly allow people to know what we are about and what we're doing within our business and who we are. Yep. I mean, it's, it's powerful stuff you're doing, man. And and I appreciate the interview. Hey, I appreciate you being here, man. I, I say, I did say I started it kind of selfishly a little bit, you know, I, I don't wanted believe to, so. I don't well, believe so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to meet other people, but you know what? It's grown into something more where, um, you know, I just, I just want to see how we can do things, how we can do fun things together and how other people like can be brought up as well and do fun things, you know, as a group, this is what we're meant to do. We're meant to meet each other exactly. and, and do cool things together. So it's been a pleasure, man. I will put links to the description uh, or in the description to your Facebook page, oh, the growth you. coast Facebook page. Um, am I missing anything? I don't nope. think so, man. I'm going to no, let you get, I'm going to let you get back to crushing everything that you're doing, man. It's been a pleasure. Well, enjoy your day. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Yeah. You too. Later, Jeff. We'll talk soon.